Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Westdale. My name is Lila McLoach. I am the host and producer of Center Stage on Indy 101.5 FM. And I'm thrilled to be here to moderate this Q&A with the director of this wonderful film, This Place. Let's give it up for our director, VT Nunny. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one of the very exciting things, is this your very first feature film? Yeah, it's my first feature. And how did this come to be? How did, what was the genesis of this project? Um, well, I just want to say thank you to the folks that came to watch the movie. I really appreciate it. You know, I don't have any pretenses. I know it's really hard for independent Canadian local films. So every time people show up, I'm genuinely like very grateful and surprised. So thank you for like, coming on a Sunday afternoon to come see the movie. I really appreciate it. Um, the film, um, the idea for it came in 2014. So my parents are Tamil, like Malay in the film, and came as refugees in the late 80s from Sri Lanka to Toronto through other routes. My dad to London, my mom to London, the Bronx, Vermont, wow. Montreal, <laughs> Toronto. My mom through India and then to Toronto, Montreal and then to Toronto. So um, a long journey and I don't know if Folks remember in 2009, um, the genocide that was happening in Sri Lanka and there were widespread protests around the world. And I decided to talk to other Tamil women and see, you know, whether they decided to participate in those protests or not, you know, what, what were the reasons behind their decisions. Again, nothing to do with film, completely just of my own interest. And a friend of mine, Darshika Salvasivam, who was a family friend, uh, was one of the people I interviewed and she had asked, a question that I had never considered before, unfortunately, which was, you know, what does it mean to protest on indigenous land that's been stolen for land elsewhere that we no longer have claim to, especially when our histories are tied through colonial legacies? And that was a question, unfortunately, that I had never thought about and made me reconsider and reflect on how much there was a lack of a relationship I had to the land, to my understanding of the land, to indigenous communities. Um, so naively, I was like, maybe this could be a good idea, a film about friendship originally, just two people who meet and become friends, one who's Tamil and the other one who is indigenous. I didn't know which community, which nation they might be part of at the time. I knew I wanted to write it with somebody who is like, indigenous and very naive, just like two friends talking. <laughs> and then um, Devery and I met through mutual friends, and we met in the village in Toronto and had co coffee or tea at, at Second Cup, I think, and told her this idea, and she was like immediately like, yeah, I'd love to be part of this, I'd like to help co-write it. Um, she's an incredible writer-director herself. I know she's known for her acting, but is talented immensely in so many ways, and. Goshen and I both grew up in Scarborough in the east end of Toronto and she is a refugee herself and her parents are both political, were political refugees or were and always will be political refugees from Iran and so we had been talking about it for a while like just our experiences coming from displaced communities and yeah she just joined I think the second meeting I was like to Debbie I have somebody else that could be incredible <laughs> again very naive like let's make a movie up no money no I can't pay you to write the script I can't pay myself but like maybe we can experiment and um yeah it started this long journey and Debbie was falling in love with her partner DW they had met while we were writing and so Debbie and Goshen were both in different ways coming into their queerness as they as they explain it and so they were both like, I think that they should fall in love. This is not just like, it's a friendship, but it's more than that. And I was like, sure, like I'm, I'm down for whatever. Like <laughs> you can evolve and grow, that's why you're part of it. And, um, and so it became this love story that explores, I think not only like this intimate partner, coming of age, burgeoning like first love, but also the complicated nature of love when it comes to family and mm -hmm. elders and community as well. One of the biggest laughs from the audience is when Devere Jacobs and Priya Guns uh, have a, a date together and they're talking about their identities as Tamil and Mohawk women and how they neither identify as Sri Lankan nor Canadian because of those identities and also how uh, 
Canadians tend to be even more pro-monarchy than even the Brits uh, in our <laughs> colonial existence. So that was, that was a big laugh from the audience, that whole conversation that happened. But you know what was really lovely, and, and, and I speak of this as Can my- Can I say one oh, thing? go ahead, sure. It's like when we had our world premiere last year at TIFF in Toronto, the Queen had just passed away the day before. So, <laughs> so when that Queen comment came up, when Priya goes, you know, when Malay says what she says, because she's the one who's cussing through the film, um, our producer, Steph, who is half British and half Trinidadian, was like, something about, oh, the Queen's still the fucking head of state, and Steph says, not anymore! <laughs> and the entire, I'm like, not our producer. <laughs> like, she's like, well, they know who they're dealing with when they see this film. And so she, everyone erupts. I think people missed half the conversation. <laughs> People were still laughing to Steph. And I was like, she's half British, she gets the same. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that was just a no, fun no, story. No, 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 uh, love it, love it. Uh, one of the things that's really lovely about this film, and I, I speak as a, as a queer person who not necessarily was accepted as queer by their parents, was that both of their families, when they came out to them, did not reject them because of their queerness, which was beautiful. What was, the, what, why that choice? Yeah, I think we made a really conscious decision collectively that like we didn't want their queerness or their experience, their love to be the source of problems in their life, that everybody else is getting in the way of it. But I think what we thought, especially Goshen and I, but Debbie said it too, like I think folks expect, especially as immigrant or refugee communities of color, for there to be like always like it's conservative versus not conservative. And like not to say that there are not multiple experiences that, you know, of how coming out can look and even the decision not to come out in, in the way that we understand coming out, I guess. And we've talked about like, you know, even in um, a lot of communities of color, the conversation we have is like, sometimes you don't always come out, but everybody knows and this kind of Western concept of coming out doesn't apply to everybody. There's different ways that we learn to navigate and, and live amongst family and community. So the kind of complicated nature of this idea of coming out, I guess, is what we discussed based on experiences in our communities and our, in our, in our circles. Um, so we just didn't want, we just was like, that doesn't need to be the problem here. Like even, I think my favorite scene, a lot of folks is Arun and Malay in the car and she, she tells him and he's just like, oh. <laughs> and I think that oh is just so funny and he's just like, you have so little faith in me and I think like it's such a refreshingly surprising response from like this kind of older Tamil brother who like some might assume is conservative or she even calls like, him you are an older Tamil yeah, man well, yeah. Uncle, yeah like an older Tamil man so again we just all we were like we didn't want to make a trauma drama obviously our lives have traumatic events and heartbreak and grief and displacement and all the things that our communities have been through um, and at the same time we have so much love and joy and we have resilience and faith and hope and we wouldn't be here if we didn't have those things. So, and we wouldn't have survived and continue to thrive in the ways that we do. So we just really wanted to focus on um, that not being an issue. And even if it doesn't exist, we want more of that. Yeah. yeah. Although there is a lot of trauma in, in, in this <laughs> film and, and uh, looking at the generational trauma of children of refugees who come to Canada. So um, my grandparents and my father escaped from Hungary during the 1956 Hungarian Revolution and came to Canada. And it, it didn't hit me till much later in life, the trauma of leaving uh, a country that's your home that you can't go back to because of the, the regime that's in charge. And I, you see that history uh, with the fathers of these children and how um, home is a very interesting subject and the title of the film, This Place. So when you're exploring the topic of home in this film, what, what sort of defines it for you? Because it, it's, it's many things to many different people, but it, starts, it does start a, from a position of trauma for all the generations of these families. Yeah, I mean, the word this place is all, uh, I think for those who think about it, is a, a play on the word displaced because um, both as indigenous communities, it's every community, but it, oh, as indigenous communities, but also people who have migrated or been displaced to this land, there has been a displacement experienced um, both amongst racialized kind of refugee communities, specifically in our context, and then indigenous communities on this land have been displaced from their own land. 
to other parts of the land. And so um, that was a conscious decision to kind of like pay homage to this collective experience of displacement, however different it looks. And then in terms of home, it's been interesting, like, you know, Devry and Goshen, on Friday we had a screening and they shared like really interesting perspectives. Devry, for example, shared like, we really wanted to fit a film in Ganawage or at least in Six Nations and because of budget and time, we just couldn't do it. And we felt really bad, Goshen and I, and we had a conversation with Debbie before filming and she was like, well, this is all Haudenosaunee territory, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so either way, as long as we're doing it effective, like uh, respectfully and thoughtfully and in community with indigenous folks, particularly Mohawk folks, this is our land. <laughs> and I was like, fair, exactly, it is. <laughs> so that was an interesting, you know, like, you know, conversation that we were having in Goshen, you know, is um, like her friend Eden calls her like the great outdoors woman of our generation. So she's always hiking, she's tending to the land, um, she's growing crops, like she's just really in her farmer bag, like she's really in it. And both of us, our, our, our grandparents, like we come from farming families where we're from originally. And so she talked about like, she always wanted, she's a Sagittarius, if anyone knows what I mean, but she's always like, I love, she always wanted to travel. Like, when am I gonna get out? Where am I going? I'm going to Italy, I'm going to the US, I'm trying to get out. And she, through her practice of um, tending to the land and growing um, crops, she was like, okay, I'm actually establishing some kind of relationship or honoring of the land. And so how do I find a sense of home here where I take care of the land that I'm a settler on and be in community through what I'm growing? And so I think all of us have different perspectives. My sense of, I don't really grow things very well, despite my grandfather (laughs) being a farmer and my dad being the plant whisperer. It's just not in my bag. But, um, you know, I I really think of home as a place um, wherever people I love are. So I have, you know, I I didn't grow up going home to Sri Lanka in the summers. Like I have friends who are from Jamaica or India the Philippines and they would like go home and spend time with their extended family and we just didn't have those trips like all my family was displaced and left and so um, they were around the world or they were in Toronto so my idea of, of home is very much wherever people I love are and um, that includes both my blood and chosen family because growing up in a place like Toronto as my mom has said, like you have found family here with all of your friends and their family. You can go anywhere in the world and you can stay with somebody's auntie or uncle or cousin. And it's true, I travel a lot and I rarely stay in a hotel because I have a sense of family um, in multiple places I feel so grateful for. So um, I think we're all like trying to make sense of home. Uh, of course, Devry is like, this is my land. <laughs> this is my home, regardless of what people say or what the government says, and Goshen's like, how do I work with the land as a sense of home? And I'm just kind of like wherever people I love are home. So I think we all have different senses of it. It's evolving.